Welcome to the celebration of the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time at All Saints Parish. We encourage you, even though you're not here physically with us, to participate in the Mass as fully as you're able, to kneel if you're able, stand where appropriate, and certainly to acclaim the responses as fully as you can. We also encourage you to perhaps light a candle in the space where you're watching this televised worship, just to feel the light of Christ and to feel part of the faith worship community. Thank you for joining us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. glad you could all be with us to celebrate this Mass this morning. I uh, have two announcements. One is about the survey that we've been taking. Uh, we're ending this up this weekend, so if you have not done it, please do. And this is not only for parishioners, but it's for anybody who has any notion of All Saints Parish or even of the Catholic Church. We want your impressions. So it can be former parishioners, visitors, People have been, come from time to time, people who have left the church, who no longer practice, people who are upset with us, whatever. We'd like to hear all kinds of opinions because we generally just hear parishioners and that's important, but we also want to hear lots of other people. So please do the survey. You can do it online and or on our app. And um, I think that's all you need to know about that. So thank you for that. And as far as masses are concerned, you know that we do not have to attend Mass on Sunday in church, but, uh, and we will continue to have this Mass recorded uh, and available on Saturday by 4 o'clock anyway, and it will be on the web, on the app, on the uh, Facebook, and on YouTube. And if you're over 65 or have some compromising health conditions, we recommend that you stay at home to be safe. Um, this weekend, we will have two in-person Masses. They will be at 4 o'clock on Saturday, June 27, at St. Joseph Church, and at 10.30 on Sunday, June 28, at St. Anthony Church. Uh, the following weekend, we will have the same schedule. No, res no reservations are needed. We ask that you wear a face mask and observe social distancing because that virus is still very active, and we want to keep everyone safe. The restrooms are only for dire emergencies, so please, uh, if you can, avoid using them. We're also offering weekday Masses on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock at St. Anthony Church. And if you're over 65 and or for any reason want to attend Mass and are available at that time, please consider making your Sabbath during the week. And please continue to pray for the health and safety of all our parishioners, for our parish family, for those infected with the coronavirus and their families, those grieving from the loss of a loved one, those suffering from loss of income, and those dealing with hunger. May God keep us all safe. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord reminds us to be hospitable, to welcome others into our midst, especially within our Christian community and wherever we may be, to be welcoming. So let's take a moment to reflect on how well we've been doing. Lord God, we generally think of ourselves as being pretty welcoming people, but there are times when we are scared or have other things on our mind and whatever, and we're not so accepting as we think we are, so we ask you <coughs> to forgive us. <coughs> so we ask, <coughs> Lord, what's the response? I lost it. Lord, hear up. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, <clears throat> forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. I think the isolation is getting to my brain. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. made us children of light, adopted us. Grant that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I would ask that you take your Bible at home and open it up to the second book of Kings. <coughs> Excuse me. We're looking at <coughs> the second book of Kings, chapter 4, verse 8. 
And it speaks about the prophet El Elisha. And uh, Elisha traveled around a lot because often people were after him, uh, but also to spread God's word in different places. And traveling was much different in those days. We're used to travel pretty simply. We make a few plans, we get people together, whoever's going with us, if anyone is, we pack up some things, we throw it in the car, we take off and drive to wherever. We may have to be in a hotel or motel, we enjoy the restaurants, and we move on. In Elisha's time, things were much, much different. You usually walked, unless you were really, really lucky and had a burrow or a donkey or something. Uh, you carried your stuff on your back, that's all that you had and there were no hotels around nor restaurants or very few so if you when you came to a village you hoped someone would take you in and give you some food and a place to rest for the evening so Elisha found this couple that he and he passed by their place often and eventually they made him a room they had the room all set up for him they would feed him and make him comfortable comfortable for the evening and, but they were a childless couple. And in their culture, child, being childless was a great disgrace. And so as a reward for their hospitality, Elijah or Elisha saw, saw to it that they were rewarded. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha was passing through Shunem where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to have a meal. So whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for a meal. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure that this man who regularly passes our way is a holy man of God. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that he may stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when he came there, he went up to the chamber and lay down there. Please go to verse 14. Elisha said to his servant Gehazi, What then may be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood at the door. He said, At this season, in due time, you shall embrace a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness for you have said my kindness is established forever in heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O oh Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. 
and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of the strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel, our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The next reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 8. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 8. And it speaks here about being baptized into Jesus' death. And many churches have a baptismal font, pool, where people are actually being able, can actually be immersed under the water. So they're dying with Christ and entering a watery tomb and then rising to new life with him. And that's the symbolism. And those churches like ours are very fortunate to have a baptismal font that's a pool. The reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Please go to verse 8. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, beginning with verse 37. Matthew 10, verse 37. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Spirit, Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, Glory to you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus said, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of a righteous person. And whoever gives even a, drop, even a cup of cold water to one of these least little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. We kind of wish Jesus were exaggerating, right? And this was even more startling in Jesus' time because families in those days were much different. Families in those days stuck together very tightly. The father and mother and children lived together in one house. When they were old enough to marry, the sons would bring their wives into the same house and maybe add on a bit, and another son added on a bit with his wife, and so on, and their children lived there, so it was a, a big family home. And they were very dependent upon one another. In those days, there were no hospitals, there were few doctors, there was no insurance, there were, was no social security disability, so that if you became sick, you had to be taken care of in the home. If you became disabled, no social security, so you had to be taken care of by others, and probably their economics were affected by all that. And so everything was centered there. And so you can see why people were suspicious of others who, out, who were outside the family, even sometimes within their own, their own village. And so, when Jesus is saying, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, or son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, we get a little nervous. Jesus expected people to be totally dependent and to be welcoming of others. He speaks of the prophet being hospitable to a prophet and receiving the prophet's reward, and we saw that in the first reading where Elijah, or Elisha rather, those two guys went back to back, so I keep switching their names. Elisha rewarded, or God rewarded through Elisha, the lady who gave him hospitality. And I think he wants us to be very hospitable people. And I think at All Saints Parish, we're really very, very good at that. But I'm sure there's always ways that we could improve, and some of us may be better than others. And we need to welcome people especially those who we don't know, those who are strangers among us, those who are visitors, those who are guests, and people who are very different. It's nice that we have black and white here at St. Anthony and at St. Joseph. We have a mix of people. Um, we have young and old, and it's, it's a nice mixture. And hopefully those people are always made to feel welcome and at home and one with us. But there are times when things that happen that way. I'm, here's an example from long ago from the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi. And when he was a student, he was in South Africa rather than India. 
And in South Africa, he ran into the Bible, the Christian Bible, and he became more and more interested in Christianity. And um, he one day decided to go to a Catholic church and um, learn what they were doing and maybe take instructions and learn more about the faith. And when he arrived at the door in South Africa, being an Indian, he rather looked like a black person to them. And so he was welcomed at the door of the church by an usher who was very nice and said, Sir, if you want to worship in the Catholic Church, there is a black church down the street, and you will be welcome there. And he never entered the Catholic Church again. So it's an example of what our attitude, our presumptions can do to people, to make them feel unwelcome, to, make, to turn them away. And so we need to be very careful about how we are welcoming to others no matter what. And in church, we should re feel relatively safe and at home. So hopefully, we will always be able to do that. Now, it's strange to talk about that in these times of the coronavirus when we're hardly even gathered together. But um, the time will come when we will come back again someday. And uh, hopefully, we will be very hospitable. So let's just take a few moments to reflect on how we welcome others, whether we welcome them as though they were Jesus in our midst. We believe that God appears to us in many different forms, in many different people. Let's profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, May we who have died with Christ in baptism live for God in our families, our workplaces, and society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we welcome all whom God sends to us and receive them in generosity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we might reach greater depths of peace by addressing and resolving deeply rooted injustices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the COVID virus might ease its grip on our nation and world, and that an effective vaccine be successfully developed soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for those who are ill. Karen Schenbuckler and those whose names are in our book of intentions, may they find strength, hope, and comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, Mary Groylich, and those listed in our book of intentions, may God grant them eternal rest and peace and count them among the multitudes in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. We ask that you answer our prayers as you see best and help us accept your answer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood that bears our name. Behold the nails that hold our sin. The tree from which salvation blooms death by which we're born again we take up our cross and follow him we lay down our lives that we might live we carry the hope of christ within we take up our cross and follow Embrace the sacrifice and walk the path we cannot see. The burdens of this world made light. By blood and thorn we are redeemed. We take up our cross and follow Him. We lay down our lives that we might live. We carry the hope of Christ within. We take up our cross and follow Him. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at our hands, hands for the, the praise, praise of Lord God's, God's name, name, for our, our good and the good of all God's holy church. Holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he, was, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Mary Groylich and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the glory, glory are, yours, are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, if you can safely do so, please exchange some sign of peace with one another. Behold the 
Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, my roof but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. sanctify me body of Christ save me blood of Christ inebriate me water from the side of Christ wash me passion of Jesus Christ strengthen me Save me, blood of Christ, inebriate me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me within thy wounds, hide me. sanctify me body of Christ save me blood of Christ inebriate me at the hour of my death call me and bid that I might come to thee with thy sins I may praise thee forever and ever soul of Christ who oh, sanctify me body of Christ save me blood of Christ inebriate me sanctify me body of Christ save me blood of Christ inebriate me as I've told you before we ask that you make a spiritual communion and that sounds kind of pietistic but I we know that God does not need sacraments he gave them to us because we find them helpful but he does not need them and he can strengthen us without the sacrament so ask him to come and strengthen you as he would in the Eucharist and if you listen to the song the prayer after communion it was a prayer and it was a prayer of spiritual communion body of Christ sanctify me so let's take a moment to ask the Lord to come living into our hearts once again Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, so that, bound to you in lasting love, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee take my silver and my gold not a might would i withhold take my intellect and use every power as you choose treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. myself and I will be ever only all 